for Aurora, as you say, you want to really point your antennas of magnetic north and possibly just skewed slightly in the direction that you want to go, slightly. I think some experimentation is due. Prove that out one way or the other. Uh, and it also depends on how far south auroral cloud you are as to whether or not you want to be offset from it. That's another good aspect of further research. And I do mean research. We really don't have a good answers for this. Well, I, uh, and also along the line of, of longitude, the farther away you are. For example, if you're working a station in Pennsylvania, it wouldn't be you know, too far off from where you are. But if you're working somebody by Aurora, say in Wyoming, or Washington, obviously you'd have to move it more to the west, you know, northwest. Right. But again, it really depends on where that auroral cloud is most dense. Because if it's dense over over Hudson Bay and not over, let's say, a, a spot in Alberta, and you're trying to work at Wyoming or even Nebraska, you just don't know. You have to figure out where the auroral cloud is most dense because that's where the most energy is going to be reflected right. at the end of the day. Right. I understand. All right. Now, having said that, meteor scatter varies according to where the entry point of the meteor trails are and or should we, the trajectory of the meteor trails. And you have to look it up for almost every storm. But in general, since we all we all live in the east, one way or the other, I may live south of you, but we, we all live in the east. In general, we're going to be pointing northwest, all of us, one form or another for meteor scatter, almost universally. You guys may find yourself a little more west at times, depending on the nature of the uh, meteor shower and where it's leaving ion trails. But again, you can look that up. You can look it up on any of the VHF reflectors and just ask. If you don't know, just ask. And you can ask in advance, which is nice. It's a good question. Now, moon bounce. Hmm. How do you take a big, big antenna? Because at some level, six meter Yagi, let's say it's even a five element Yagi, is pretty big. There are guys with single Yagis doing moon bounce. They run low loss cable. They run legal limit amplifiers, or at least a kilowatt, and they have a pretty good time of it. Now, the trick is, if you are, if you can do azimuth, that's nice. But if you're stuck with just azimuth and no elevation, that means you're going to be doing moon rises and moon sets. Well, let me just give you guys and gals a refresher course as to where you live. Everything to your east is either a big wall or a big wall with noise on top of it. And oh, by the way, on the other side of that wall with noise on top of it, uh, to the east, is more noise. It's called New York City and uh, Yonkers and Long Island and Connecticut. And how do I know this? Well, one year in my misspent youth i was at state line lookout and i was so excited i was going to have a moon rise and i was at state line lookout and i was going to be on two meters i had a four bay i put a special short four bay array up just on two meters for the purposes of, of catching the moon on a, and maybe i'll do a couple of moon bounce contacts and the moon started to come over the horizon the sun went down and all of those mercury vapor and sodium vapor lamps started up simultaneously and raised my noise score by seven estimates, just like that. Now, here's what's interesting. After nine o'clock, it all calmed down because it was the startup noise on the ballast that was giving me the grief. But at 7.30 at night, as the sun was setting over my shoulder to the west, and I'm looking at the moon to my east, I had this ridiculous noise floor. I mean, ridiculous noise floor. And I can imagine on six meters, it would have been worse. So moon sets are your friends. And even tilting a Yagi up at 30 degrees and then following it around is good. There's also a thing called a polar mount which you can also do on two meters too, where you set the angle of the pole and you, but the rotator 
is in line with the pole like this. And you basically just track the moon. And every few days, you just have to change the angle of the mast. And you catch the moon, ri uh, moon rise in the east. And you just roll to the west where it's moon set. So you can do that with a polar mount. With one or two Yagis on six meters and a polar mount, that's really easy to do. I will say this, a ham M rotator is only meant to be waterproof in the vertical position. So if you use a ham M rotator, and it's not vertical, you still have to provide it with some sort of rain shield. And that rain shield, by the way, could be something as simple as a one or two gallon bleach bottle stuck over the rotator. <laughs> I mean... You don't need to get crazy. Just something to keep the direct rain off of it, off the seals. So that's another thought. Gordon? All, yes, sir. Excuse me. I'm going to talk you done about any... antennas next unless someone else has another thought. Go ahead, Fred. Have you done any EME work above two meters? I've only done it on two meters. Okay. Uh, bidirectionally. I've heard my echoes off the moon. I've heard WB to WIK off the moon. And it, back... In those days when I lived in Little Falls, it was real easy to tell the difference between Steve and on Sheep Hill or out where he lived when he lived in Rockaway in that area of the world or Bill K2OWR out further because their echoes were two and a quarter seconds later. Mm. <laughs> you know, I know both it. those guys very well. Yeah, their characters. <laughs> a garden? Yeah. And so... Uh, Doing moon bounce at full moon, like when it was rising above the horizon over New York City, uh, when all those bows and whatnot were raising the, the noise floor. Seven it's like you uh, yes. do it on some other phase when it moon rises, say, like at first quarter or last quarter. Or okay, whatever. so you bring up a good question. So it's a misconception. It's not necessarily the optimum time to communicate off the moon when it's a full moon its ideal time is when it's at at perigee where it's close to the earth because the moon just for reference varies between 242,000 miles and roughly 262,000 miles from the earth so you're much better off when the moon is closer so what phase of the moon you know, from a standpoint of it's being shadowed or illuminated, if you will, doesn't matter. That's not relevant. What's relevant is how close it is to the earth. And considering the round trip delay, a at, at, at round trip loss, I should say, is in a couple hundred dB round trip. And that's with a seven plus, at best, a 7% reflectivity off the moon. And that's at two meters. I don't know what it is at six off the top of my head. Well, I guess but, also the moon is a bigger uh, target when it's closer. So that's at right. first I was going to say like, well, maybe five or 10% difference. Like that can't ma much matter, like a fraction of a DB, but I suppose every DB bigger target should, a bigger target should that reflect more signal and being closer. So that's right. You know. Right. Now, early on in this conversation, I talked about some really simple antennas. The half wave loop is very good. I personally like the full wave loop, but they're really ungainly and you have to, you have to feed them with, with a matching network a 70 ohm matching network, but they do work a bit better. Some people just say the heck with it and just stack two antennas that are halfway because that's easier for them. That's fine too. Other people will stack four of them on the side of their, but we talked about those kinds of omnidirectional antennas, but you can actually just set up Yagi's in the directions you wanted. I kind of hinted at that. And you can get some half inch tubing, uh, six foot pieces and cut them down to make two or three element Yagi's. You can put them on blocks of wood. If you don't want to use a block of wood, a good sturdy nylon cutting board and stick it in your saw and cut it up into pieces and make gus insulated gusset plates out of that. But two six foot pieces of half inch tubing bridged together and then trimmed to the appropriate length for a reflector, a driven fed like a, with a dipole and maybe like six or eight turns of coax about eight inches around as a ballon. And then another element 5% shorter than the driven 
So you got a 5% longer and a 5% shorter as the reflector and the director. And then you have your dipole element. And you can put that up on a piece of square stock with a couple of bolts and you've got yourself a really nice three element Yagi for not too much money. You could even buy a 50 foot piece of, of RG8X, cut off what you don't think you're going to need and turn that into a jumper or maybe a J-pole feed for another antenna and just use the bare wires with a couple of coils. So as I said, as a ballon and then feed it right down to your radio and you're done. So those are simple ways of doing it. But there's another antenna that I think I want to draw people's attention to that I haven't played with yet, but I really, it, it, it's got my attention because of who's using it. There's a thing called an LWA antenna. And basically it's a, it's a loop driven element. It's, it's flat. It's not like a quaggy. it's flat. And in number one, it's DC grounded. And so that means you won't have to worry about static buildup on the antenna. So it's inherently quieter. So your noise level is going to be lower. So I think there's something to be said for that. These LWA Yagis, but homebrewing one, I haven't had a chance to do yet, but um, that, that's on my list of, uh, of things to do over the next couple of years. And all the guys who do moon bounce love those kinds of antennas. I cannot emphasize that enough. So anyway, questions. Uh, just a comment, Gordon, Sir. about uh, six meters. For those people who have never messed around with the magic band, it is incredible. I'll just tell you a quick story about what I had with the minimal antennas when I was down in Virginia, I had a disc cone on six, which essentially is a unity gain antenna. It was a broad banded thing. And I just had it for sort of knocking around and to show you what six meters can do and what you could do with a minimal setup. I had 10 Watts and a Yesu 736 R into a disc cone and two summers in a row during either an F2 opening or sporadic E I worked the same station in in the Cape Verde Islands, two summers in a row on six meters with a minimal antenna, vertical polarization, and 10 watts. So do not discount primitive setups, if you will, to do magic things on the magic band when things are right. So anybody who has not messed with six meters, literally, you could virtually throw up a wire and you could be working DX in a good E season. So I encourage the folks who have not messed with six meters. And if you've got a radio that can tune those frequencies, go for it. It is a fun place in the RF spectrum to be. Yeah, absolutely. 100, 910 inches of wire. There's your dipole. You know, start longer because your mileage may vary. Trimming up a, a dipole for six meters is is a piece of cake. Bob, wa 2 isc don't you operate with the dipole in your attic? Basically, yeah. it's a little more than just a length of, of 14 gauge house wire. I wrapped a few turns of coax around a water bottle to create a, a choke ballon, and then it's fed with Belden, was it 9914 or whatever low loss coax. That's all I've been using. So, and in your attic, and we worked last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, I mean, I mean, I've got a fairly decent station, but fact is that Tony was running 35 watts into his 80 meter full wave loop that sits at around 30 feet at the most around you know his and Mary's house with no tuner. Yeah, I think and, he was running the seventh harmonic of his 40 meter uh, dipole. Right. Because he has no ability to do matching, he just yeah. cr he throttled back his power and said, well, whatever God lets radiate will radiate. <laughs> <laughs> and, and by God, it worked. It, worked. it was it yeah. was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so th that's good. Anybody else have questions? Yeah, any other questions for Gordon? Nothing heard, as they say. Gordon, this was spectacular. One other thing for him. And oh, thanks sure. to Noel as well, too, for suggesting you on short notice. So, Noel, yeah. over to you. Yesterday, we were at the TechNet, and he worked, what, four people in New Jersey on six meters? Oh, more than that, but at least. Yeah, but four members of Barra. Uh, at least three. All right. Perfect. I can hang around after if you'd yeah. like.